So long as he goes and she brews, a little field disciple here. Let's uh let's get some daily bread in today. Uh, we will be reading Exodus 30, Psalm 77, Proverbs 31, and John chapter 11. We're going to do it a little bit different today. Um, we're going to, uh, let's read the Psalms and the Proverbs first, and then we'll go read Old Testament, and then we'll go read the New Testament. Uh, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Um, I have several videos in my archives where I do extensive um, in-depth studies on certain subjects, certain um, uh, doctrines, uh, but also we do a daily bread where we read four chapters of scripture daily. Uh, and every now and again, from time to time, like yesterday, I missed a day, uh, but we're back on track today. So uh, we'll read one Old Testament, one New Testament, uh, a Psalm and a Proverb, and we'll read those in uh, in order. Uh, starting in, we started in Genesis 1, Matthew 1, Psalm 1, and Proverb. I don't remember whatever, whatever the day the proverb is because there's 31 Proverbs. Um, and so there's one proverb for each day of the month. If it's a month that only has 30 days, um, we will double up or, um, sorry, I just seen a, a wet spot out in the field. Um, it's just from the rain. Anyway, um, if we have a, a month that only has 30 days, uh, we'll double up on the last day of the month or the first day of the month. Um, but this month, we don't have to worry about it because it's 31 days today. Today is the 31st. Uh, so we will read Proverbs 31. Right. So, the old pump jack of pumping. Let's get to reading our daily bread. Um, and what this does, it just gives us um, discipline to read the scriptures daily. Um, and then from that, it should inspire us to go and do in-depth further in-depth research and study on on something um, to further find out who Yahweh is this also gives us an overall fulfillment of who God is you know reading the old the new and, and the song of David and, and, a, and a wisdom a proverb of, of Solomon um, just gives us an overall roundness of Yahweh if you're new I read from the scriptures um, Yahweh is God, Elohim is Lord, Yeshua is Jesus, Mitzrayim is Egypt, and those are about the main ones that we will, uh, we do not transliterate to English, that you'll hear quite often. All right, Psalm 77, my voice is to Elohim and I cry, my voice is to Elohim and he listens to me. In the day of my distress, I sought Yahweh. My hand was stretched out in the night, and it did not cease. My being refused to be comforted. I remembered Elohim and groaned. I complained, and my spirit grew faint. Selah. I cry out to the Lord. Um, now, we've talked about it over and over again that um, if you're a heathen of the world, you're a goyim, uh, a Gentile, and you have no place for Yahweh in your daily life, and just to pray to him for success or or whatnot, he's probably not going to hear you. I'm not saying he won't, but the scriptures bear out that he does not listen to that. Uh, he'll listen to a prayer of repentance. He'll listen to to that. But as far as you know, give me this job I really need it, or or uh, keep my landlord from coming over here and yelling at me because I ain't paid my rent, or, or whatever the case may be, uh, he's probably not going to hear that. Um, but when we are in the Lord, when we are walking with Yahweh, we, you know, and we are going to trip, stumble, and fall, um, the most righteous of us, the best of us, is going to trip, stumble, and fall. I mean, we see that throughout um, the life of David, especially. Um, so, verse 4, you ceased the watches of my eyes. I was too troubled to speak. I have thought about the days of old and the years long past. I remember my song in the night, and I meditate within my heart. My spirit searches diligently. Would Yahweh reject forever and never again be pleased? Has his loving commitment ceased forever? Has the promise failed for all generations? Has El forgotten to show favor? Has he shut up his compassions in displeasure? Selah. 
Would God forget us? Would he leave us or forsake us? Absolutely not. And I said, this is my grief, that the right hand of the Most High has changed. I remember the deeds of Yah, for I remember your wonders of old, and I shall meditate on all your work and talk of your deeds. Your way, O Elohim, is in the set-apartness. Now, set-apart, uh, when I speak set-apart, it's going to be holy, because that's what holy means. It's holy. holy is set-apart, to be cut out, set-apart for a specific purpose. <coughs> Who is great? Who is a great El like Elohim? You are the El who does wonders. You have made known your strength among the peoples. By your arm you have redeemed your people and the sons of Jacob and Yosef. Selah. The water saw you, O Elohim, and the water saw you and they were afraid. The depths also trembled. The clouds poured out water and the heavens rumbled. Also your arrows flashed back and forth. And the voice of your thunder rolled along, and lightnings lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was in the sea, and your path in the great waters, and your footsteps were not known. You did lead your people like a flock, and by the hand of Moshe and Aaron. Right. Reading that made me think of a, uh, a message I was listening a long time ago. Uh, God created the heavens and the earth. He created the, the stars, the sun, moon, and planets to, to go to their place, and they, they obeyed, and they, and they said, I will. He created the green grass and the, and the fields um, of trees and flowers, and they obeyed. He created the animals to do their job, and they obeyed. And he created man, and man said, I will not. Uh, the rebellion of man, the sin nature that dwells within man um, is, is quite overwhelming. God has more patience than I have. That is no doubt. God has way more love than I have. That is no doubt. Psalm 31. Uh, now, in... in Psalms, Proverbs 31, Mishle 31. We're going to read about a woman. The woman being uh, wisdom in the church, a representation of wisdom in the church, also a physical representation of a woman. The words of Sovereign Lemuel. Sovereign is king. The words of King Lemuel, a message which his mother taught him. What, my chosen? And what chosen of my womb? And what chosen of my vows? Do not give your strength to women, nor your ways to wiping away kings. Not for kings, O Lemuel, not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes to desire strong drink, lest they drink and forget what is inscribed, and pervert the right of all the afflicted. Give strong drink to him who is perishing, and wine to those embittered in being. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his trouble no more. Open your mouth for the dumb and the cause of all the sons of the departed. Open your mouth and judge righteously and plead the cause of the poor and the needy who does find a virtuous woman. For she is worth far more than rubies and the heart of her husband shall trust her. And he has no lack of gain and she shall do him good and not evil all the days of her life. All right, this, um, this being a, a good representation of a physical woman, yet wisdom and the church, all three. Um, who would find a virtuous woman? Who would find a capable wife? Um, that is a physical representation of a wife, a woman. It's also a, a physical, or it's also a representation of uh, wisdom. Who will find wisdom? Only through the Holy Spirit and knowledge of the Word do we find wisdom. Who will find a decent, well-rounded, Holy Spirit-led Word church, Word-based church? Okay, who would find that? It's far. It's it's worth far more than rubies. Far worth far more than gold and silver. Um, Verse 13, she shall seek wool and flax 
and with delight she works with her hands. She shall be as the ships of the merchant. She brings in her food from afar, and she also rises while it is still night, and provides food for her household. What is lawful for her girls? She shall consider a field and buy it. From her profits she shall plant a vineyard. Right. A vineyard uh, being a, an example of, of people, um, generations. And she shall gird herself with strength and strengthen her arms. She shall taste when her gain is good. Her lamp does not go out by night. And she shall stretch out her hands to the distaff. And her hands shall uphold the spindle. She shall extend her hand to the poor. And she shall reach out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household. For all her household is dressed in scarlet. That is many layers. Dressed in many layers. Um, the church. Many layers. Many different um, attributes. And, and jobs. And, and positions. She shall make tapestry for herself. <clears throat> she is dressed in fine linen and purple. And her husband is known in the gates. When he sits among the elders of the land, she shall make fine linen and sell them, and shall give girdles for the merchants. Strength and splendor are her garments, and she rejoices in time to come. She shall open her mouth with wisdom, and on her tongue is the Torah of loving commitment. She watches over the ways of her household, and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children shall rise up and call her blessed. Her husband, too. And he praises her. Many daughters have done nobly. But you have risen over them all. Loveliness is deceptive. And prettiness is vain. A woman who fears Yahweh is to be praised. Give her of the fruit. Give her of the fruit of her hands. And let her works praise her in the gates. That prettiness is vain. Um, we have all these mega churches. That are just dead bones. There is no word inside. Uh, it's all about beauty. It's all about the show. It's all about presentation rather than the Holy Spirit and the word. It's vain, vanity. Vain is like trying to bottle the wind. Okay. Well, since we're doing it a little different, let's go ahead and read John. John chapter 11. Yo, hunting. 11. 11, 11, 11. Okay. Yohanan chapter 11 verse 1 says, And a certain one was sick, Eleazar from Bethana, the village of Miriam, and her sister Martha. Now it was Miriam who anointed the master with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Eleazar was sick. Therefore the sisters sent to him, saying, Master, see, he whom you love is sick. But when Yeshua heard, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the esteem of Elohim, for the glory and honor of our Lord, so that the Son of Elohim might be esteemed by it. Now Yeshua loved Martha and her sister and Eleazar, which Eleazar is Lazarus, Therefore, when he heard that he was sick, then indeed he stayed at the place where he was two more days. Then after this, he said to his taught ones, Let us go back to Yehuda. The taught one said to him, Rabbi, the Yehudim were but now seeking to stone you, and you're going back there? Yeshua answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. He said this, and after that he said to them, Our friend Eleazar has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. <coughs> Therefore the taught one said to him, Master, if he has fallen asleep, he shall recover. But Yeshua had spoken about his death, whereas they thought that he spoken of taking rest and sleep, taking a nap. So then Yeshua said to them plainly, The Asar has died, and for your sake I am glad I was not there, in order for you to believe. But let us go to him. 
Thomas, or Thomas, who was called the twin, then said to his fellow taught ones, let us also go so that we die with him. Uh, Thomas, um, Didymus, the twin, also uh, mistakenly called uh, Doubting Thomas. Therefore, when Yeshua arrived, oh, hang on, let me back up. See, we get this, we, we've got this false teaching in the church that, that Peter denied Christ because he was he feared the Jews. He feared the people. Thomas denied Christ because he doubted. Know that, and I've done, I've said it over and over again. Peter and Thomas denied because they were cut to the deep of the spirit and the soul because Jesus did not do what they thought he was going to do for them. Jesus did not do what he what they thought he was here to do. Therefore, it broke their heart, bothered them, hurt them, cut them, causing them to deny him. It's not about doubt. Because right here, plainly, Thomas was not afraid. Thomas was like, cool, if you're going to die, I'm going to die with you. Let's do it. Therefore, when Jesus... When Yeshua arrived, he found that he had already been four days in the tomb. Now Bethana was near Jerusalem, about 15 stadia away. And many of the Yehudim had come to Martha, Miriam, to comfort them concerning their brother. Martha, when she heard that Yeshua was coming, met him, but Miriam was sitting in the house. Martha then said to Yeshua, Master, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you might ask of Elohim, Elohim shall give you. Yeshua said to her, your brother shall rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Yeshua said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he dies, he shall live. Right, Jesus is the way. He's the bread of life. He is the resurrection. He says, I am the way. I am the way the life I am the resurrection I am the bread of life I am I am I am plainly and clearly saying that I am Yahweh and everyone that is living and believing in me shall never die at all do you believe this she said to him yes master I believe that you are the Messiah the son of Elohim who is coming into the world and having said this, she went away and called her sister Miriam secretly, saying, The teacher is here and calls you. And when she heard, she rose up quickly and came to him. And Yeshua had not yet come into the village, but was in the place where Martha met him. Therefore the Yehudim who were, were with her in the house and were comforting her, when they saw that Miriam rose up quickly and went out, followed her, saying, She's going to the tomb to weep there. Miriam, therefore, when she came where Yeshua was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying, Master, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Yeshua, therefore, when he saw her weeping and the Yehudim who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said, Where have you laid him? And they said to him, Master, come and see. In the shortest verse in the Bible, Yeshua wept that wept that's not a, a little tear coming trickling from your eye that's a, a breaking down in the heart and the soul and the mind and the emotion complete utter sadness is what that wept means now it's not weeping because Lazarus or Eleazar had died it's Jesus weeping because the people lack heart they lack faith they lack heart for God they lack the faith in God in Yahweh and this just proves it. That even though he's there. And he's going to raise Lazarus from the dead. They still don't get it. They still don't understand the purpose of our life. Of life. And therefore Yeshua wept. Because he already knows Lazarus died. I mean when we get the news that someone died. That hits us right then and there. Um, sometimes it, it, it envelops in, in the form of numbness for a short time um, before we finally the weight and the gravity hits us but Jesus this isn't that's why I'm saying he's not 
Um, he's not weeping over the, the death of Lazarus. Jesus is not, well, I hope I can raise him back from the dead. Jesus knows what he's going to do. That's why he tarried for, for two extra days. Um, six days altogether. Um, he's weeping because people just don't get it. You know? Like Martha back up here. She says, I know that you'll raise him from the dead. Come the last day. She knows this. But she's having a hard time understanding his words. Same thing we do over and over again. Verse 36. Therefore, the Udim said, See how he loved him. And some of them said, Was this one who opened the eyes of the blind not also able to rent this one from dying? Sure, therefore, again groaning in himself, came to the tomb. Now, it was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Yeshua said, Take away the stone, Martha. Yeshua said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who had died, said to him, Master, already he smells, for it's been four days. This is pretty rank in here, Jesus. <laughs> you want us to open that up? Yeshua said to her, Did I not say to you that if you believe, you shall see the glory of Elohim? So they took away the stone where the dead man was laid. And Yeshua lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd standing by, I said this, in order that they believe that you sent me. Now remember, it goes back to, if we're walking in the ways of the Lord, stumbling or not, the Lord, uh, our Lord Master, our Father in heaven, hears our prayer. So see, we we read scripture, we need to look at the word. Look at the, the specific word used. You know, um, because if we read this, Father, I think you heard me. I hope you hear me. I think you hear, hear me. I'm not sure. Then that's totally different meaning and totally different than, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd standing by, I said this in order that they believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Eleazar, come out. And he who died came out bound, feet and hands with wrappings, and his face wrapped with a cloth. And Yeshua said to them, Loosen him and let him go. Can you imagine seeing this? I mean, dude's been dead for four days. Just rank stank. And all of a sudden he hops up in this mummy form. It's all wrapped up in this these 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 clothing bound hand and foot <laughs> gets up and starts hopping towards them that'd scare the hell out of people I mean it sure would today for sure and he who died came out bound feet and hands with wrappings in his face wrapped with a cloth and Jesus said loosing him and let him go therefore many of the Jews the Yehudim who had come to Miriam and had seen what Yeshua did believed in him but some of them went away to the Pharisees and told them what Yeshua did. So the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered a council and said, What shall we do? Because this man does many signs. If we let him alone like this, they all will believe in him. And the Romans shall come and take away from us both our place and the nation. Uh-oh. If we keep letting them believe in this truth, we're going to lose our stature in the world. We're going to lose our place. We must do something. And one of them, Caiaphas, being high priest that year, said to them, You know not, neither do you consider that it is better for us that one man die for the people than the entire nation perish? But he did not say this from himself. But being high priest that year, he prophesied that Yeshua was about to die for the nation. And not for the nation only, but to gather together into the children of Elohim, who were scattered abroad. Jesus came not but to seek that which were lost. 
Jesus came not but to seek and save the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So from that day on they plotted to kill him, and Yeshua therefore no longer went openly among the Yudim, but went from there into the country near the wilderness to a city called Ephraim, and remained there with his taught ones. Now the Pesach of the Yehudim was near, and many went from the country up to Jerusalem before the Pesach to set themselves apart. <coughs> All right. A lot of the accounts we read of Jesus circles around the festival of Pesach, Passover. Um, the fulfillment, the fullness that our Messiah, that Jesus would lay down his life on Passover. But yet, we, uh, we in this culture, the Christian culture, um, replace Passover. Passover with the pagan wicked holiday called Easter. Let's celebrate our holiday rather than God the Most High, His holy day, His feast day. Do not go into the nations and do as the nations do. What part of that don't we get? Verse 56 And so they were seeking Yeshua and spoke among one another, standing in the set apart place. What do you think? Is he not coming to the festival at all? And both the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a command that if anyone knew where he was, he should disclose it in order for them to seize him. Never fear, Pharisees. Judas Iscariot's on the way. He will, he will betray our Lord. Alright, Exodus 30. Kind of feels weird reading this all out of out of order. 30 verse 1. Shemot, and you shall make a slaughter place or an altar to burn incense on. Make it of acacia wood, a cubit long and a cubit wide. It is a square and two cubits high, its horns of the same. And you shall overlay its top, its sides all around, and its horns with clean gold. And you shall make for it molding of gold all around. Make two gold rings for it under the molding on both sides make them on its two sides and they shall be holders for the poles to lift it with and you shall make the poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold and you shall put it before the veil that is before the ark of the witness before the lid of atonement that is over the witness where i am to meet you and aaron shall burn on it sweet incense morning by morning as he tends the lamps and he shall burn incense on it and when Aaron lights the lamps between the evenings, he shall burn incense on it, a continual incense before Yahweh throughout the generations. And this is where um, modern cultural Christianity, churchianity, religiosity um, says, well, see, it says throughout generations we're to do this too, but we don't do that no more, so we don't have to do none of this other stuff no more. Let me ask you a question. Be honest with yourself. Let's just look at the Ten Commandments. If we're saved by, which, no, let me read. Since we are saved by grace through faith, not of our own works. How come we refuse to, to do the Sabbath? We refuse to do the Moanim, which is the, the seven um, yearly feast days of Yahweh. We refuse to do... Um, used to follow the uh, the dietary laws because Jesus done away with it how come we hold in our heart don't kill our, our neighbor we'll hold that one you know don't steal from our neighbor we'll hold that one you feel me because we have set in our own minds what we think is moral we have set in our own minds what is morally right and morally wrong. Uh, has nothing to do with what God says, but what we feel is morally right and wrong. Verse 9. Do not offer strange incense on it or an ascending offering or a grain offering, and do not pour a drink offering on it. Right. Do not put strange incense. 
Is Easter and Christmas, Halloween, is that not strange? Incense, is that not strange? Um, festivals, it is. But yet we hold dear to it and we will fight over it. When I said I was not gonna do Easter no more, that that pissed off more people than anything I've said so far. You know, you mean you're not gonna do Easter no more? I'm not gonna do Easter no more. I'm gonna keep the Passover. Feast of Unleavened Bread. Uh, we're going to to go to Sukkot uh, come the fall. We're going to do all these things that God commands us to do, not what man likes to do. Oh, no. Boy, that pissed off the people. Verse 10. And Aaron shall make atonement upon its horn once a year with the blood of the sin offering of atonement. Once a year he makes atonement upon it throughout your generations. It is the most set apart to Yahweh. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe saying, When you take the census of the children of Israel to register them, then each one shall give an atonement for his life to Yahweh. Each one shall give an atonement for his life to Yahweh. When you register them so that there is no plague among them, when you register them, everyone among those who are registered to give his life. Sorry, verse 13, let me reread that. Everyone among those who are registered to, is to give this. A half shekel according to the shekel of the holy place. 20 garaz being a shekel. The half shekel is the contribution to Yahweh. Everyone passing over to be registered from 20 years old and above give a contribution to Yahweh. The rich do not give more, and the poor do not give less than half a shekel. When you give a contribution to Yahweh to make atonement for yourselves, and you shall take the silver for the atonement from the children of Israel, and give it for the service of the tent of appointment, and it shall be to the children of Israel for a remembrance before Yahweh to make atonement for themselves. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, And you shall make a basin a basin of bronze, and it stand also bronze for washing. And you shall put it between the tent of appointment and the slaughter place, and shall put water in it. And Aaron and his sons shall wash from it their hands and their feet. And when they go to, into the tent of appointment, or when they come near the slaughter place to attend, to burn the offering made by fire to Yahweh, they wash with the water, lest they die. <clears throat> okay, it's a big wash tub, uh, a bronze wash tub that to uh, ceremonially clean themselves before entering into the tent of appointment, the Holy of Holies. And they shall wash their hands and their feet lest they die. And it shall be a law forever to them, to him, and to seed throughout their generations. That made me just kind of think of when, when Jesus was washing the disciples' feet and Peter's like, ah, you know, I can't let you let you wash my feet. That would be way below you, Jesus. And Jesus says, unless I wash your feet, you have no part with me in the kingdom. And Peter's like, well, hold on then. If, I mean, if we're going to go that far, hey, wash me all. Wash all of me, Jesus. You know, my hands, my feet, wash everything. Anyway, <laughs> I can just see Peter doing that. You know, he's like, whoa, I want this kingdom thing. Oh, where'd they go here? Verse 22, and Yahweh spoke to Moshe saying, and take for yourself choice spices, 500 shekels of liquid myrrh and half as much, 250 of sweet smelling cinnamon and 250 of sweet smelling cane, 500 of cassia, according to the shekel of the set-apart place in the hen of olive oil. And you shall make from these a set-apart anointing oil, a compound blended, the work of a perfumer. It is the set-apart anointing oil. And with it you shall anoint the tent of appointment and the ark of the witness, and the table and its utensils, and the lampstand and its utensils, and the slaughter place of incense, the slaughter place of ascending offering, with all its utensils and the basin and its and the basin and its stand, and you shall set them apart 
and they shall be most set apart. Whatever touches them is to be set apart. Don't come to God half sideways. Don't do it. Come with a clean heart. What do you mean by that? Uh, what I mean by a clean heart in this reference being, no, we don't get ourselves all fixed up before we come to Yahweh um, and ask for forgiveness. That get our clean heart. That is coming to Yahweh with a repentant heart, a heart full of desire to be renewed, to be restored. Get along here. All right. And you shall set them apart, and they shall be most set apart. Whatever touches them is to be set apart. And you shall anoint Aaron and his sons, and set them apart to serve as priests to me. And speak to the children of Israel, saying, This is a set-apart anointing oil to me throughout your generations. Anointing oil. Um, obedience. This is to be holy and obedient to Yahweh throughout generations. It shall not be poured on the flesh of a man and make it shall not be poured on the flesh of a man and make no other like it according to its composition. It is set apart. It is set apart to you. Whoever compounds any like it, or whoever puts any of it on a stranger, shall be cut off from his people. And Yahweh said to Moshe, Take sweet spices, fragrant gum, and cinnamon, and gabanium, clear frankincense, with these sweet spices, all in equal amounts. In other words, don't be playing around with this. You know, don't use it to put in your water gun and have a water gun fight. You know, um, don't mock the holy and righteous Yahweh. Don't mock him. Then you shall make of these an incense, a compound, work of a perfumer, salted, clean, and set apart. And you shall beat some of it very fine and put some of it before the witness in the tent of appointment where I meet with you. It is most set apart to you. And the incense which you make, do not make any of it, do not make any for yourselves according to its composition. It is set apart to you for Yahweh. Whoever makes any like it, to smell it, he shall be cut off from his people. Again, don't be playing around with this. Don't be playing around with Yahweh. Uh, and so, I hope this message, this, this reading, blessed you, encouraged you, even frustrated you. Go look some of this up for yourself. Uh, think about what I said about we are saved by grace through faith. But we don't get to pick what's morally right and wrong. Yahweh has already done that for us. We just need to walk in that obedience. That oil, that anointing oil is obedience. Um, I believe it's Matthew chapter 10. Um, talking about the ten virgins. Maybe Matthew 11. Uh, I don't want to tell you wrong. Let me know real quick. Matthew. Hmm. I don't want to tell y'all wrong on this. I may have to. May have to look it up and put it in the. Sorry about that, y'all. Is it? Me. Oh, no, there it is. 25. Matthew 25, the foolish virgins. All right. Uh, that's talking about obedience. The, the oil for their lamps that they must go, that they're told to go to town and, and buy. Um, 
That's obedience. You know? So anyway, one of these days I'll do a, you know, one of these days I'm gonna get a message on that uh, for the assembly. That might be a good one to do this way. Anyway, y'all be blessed, be encouraged, and always be frustrated. Soul Build Disciple will catch you. Uh, see, tomorrow is um, Shabbat. So we probably need to do uh, hanging with the prophets. I didn't get one last Shabbat. Try to do a hanging with the prophets um, tomorrow on Shabbat. Y'all be blessed, be encouraged, and always be frustrated. So we'll feel the same.